What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, working on another hydrocollator, hydroculator, whatever you want to call it. It's a, a generally simple device that runs on completely AC. And um, for this today, we're going to use our SA2600 electrical safety analyzer. We're going to put it on current. We're going to take a look and see how this thing is doing. All right, guys, here we go. And you can see from the main menu here, I really dig that you can go, you can check mains to make sure, okay, I have power in, which you have kind of an indicator because it's lit up, right? However, I'll go down to device current. And I use device current quite a bit whenever I've got a device that's questionable, it's not heating up correctly. If I have a motor that's making some weird noises, you can use device current for a lot of things. I really dig that they put it right here on the main menu. So here is the hydroculator and you know, I've, I've kind of already got it figured out. And I wanted to show you guys because I'm pretty sure if I see this problem, you guys are probably gonna see it too. So it is currently live and you remove the bottom pan here. It's very simple in principle. So you have the AC that comes in, it goes through fuses for line and neutral, and then from here it runs up to the front power switch, and both hot and neutral are switched up at the front power switch, and then it comes back and it goes through the thermal fuse right here, and oddly enough, this is not a standard thermal fuse. This is a resettable thermal fuse and if you look in between those two AC lines there there is a small plastic plunger right there you see it so you have to unplug the machine because you can see you're putting your finger right by mains so you have to make sure that you unplug the AC power before you reset that guy it, it's in theory it's very dangerous but uh, easy fix easy fix guys so this one here it was popped and I checked my heating element already. So in order to check the heating element, it's this one back here. See that rigid post that comes down? And straight back over there, there's another rigid post. And you gotta disconnect one of them and then you do ohms across the two. And I'm getting 13 ohms, which is spot on because this one right here, wow, this one here wasn't manufactured that old. Wow, that's interesting because I was recently told that this guy has no parts available. Now, that could be wrong, but the gentleman that told me that is very knowledgeable. And that is scary that here it was manufactured only two years ago and there's no parts available and is discontinued for parts. Boy, that'd be irritating. I hope that's not true, guys. But anyway, uh, this guy right here it says that it pulls 8.3 amps. So I reset the thermal fuse. The plunger is reset. Down here, I have AC mains plugged back in. I have checked the fuses and they're both good. So now, let's check. We have lights. And remember it was 8 point something amps. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to monitor this guy because it was supposedly not working. Clearly it is working. You can see I have about three to four inches worth of water in there, just enough to cover the heating element completely. And that way there it can monitor the temperature through this guy right here. That is your temperature probe. And it has some capillary tubing that goes down. You gotta be very gentle. So I just got through cleaning this guy. I used dishwasher detergent and uh, a Brillo br brush and I cleaned it. And then to finish it off, because once you clean stainless steel, it'll oxidize unfavorably. So after you clean it with anything, you gotta put some sort of coating on it. And one of the coatings that I really like is I put a really thin coat and I rub it in so it's, it's completely dry, but it protects that finish. And this was all corroded before. So you can see it's beautiful, it's not oily. 
and the inside of the basin has all been cleaned out with alcohol rags and everything so it's completely sanitary in there so here we go I'm gonna go ahead and let it get the temperature we're gonna monitor it and then maybe when it gets up the temperature down below you've seen some of those spade connectors look a little questionable we're gonna check for oxidation due to heat but uh, if it seems like it's solid we'll go ahead and do a temperature calibration on this guy and it will be good to go thanks for watching guys